You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to the Lori Davis Show. Over the past 25 years, your host, Lori Davis, has developed strategies for helping others with self worth and how that impacts all aspects of our lives. For relationship challenges to health and finance, Lori will guide you to a path of self worth and personal development. So now, please welcome the host of the Lori Davis Show, Lori Davis. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Lori Davis, and you're listening to The Lori Davis Show here on Bold Brave Media, Global Talk, Interactive, Wow, Tune In, iHeart, whatever. Today, we're going to talk about your bounce back ability, your BBA, and how great are you at bouncing back when tragedy strikes, disappointments happen because they're bound to happen. I know that uh, we do not have any particular guests today, but we would certainly welcome call-ins. Our phone line is open at 1-866-451-1451. That's 1-866-451-1451. So if you have a story to share of a time when something happened and you were able to bounce back... Our bounce back ability could be two minutes, it could be two years, and did you know that some people never recover from a setback? So, of course, it depends on what it is. If I break a fingernail, well, that might be two minutes and I'll get over myself, but if I lose a loved one, that may take forever. So, everything in between, during our show today, I'm going to share some of my own obstacles and struggles that I've endured prior to developing Self-Worth the Missing Link, during the development of Self-Worth the Missing Link. And I am prepared and know that as we go and grow, future obstacles will be in our path. It's part of the journey. It has to be that way. And we need to develop what I call coping skills. Wow. Have you noticed that many of our young people don't have any coping skills? And I wonder why that is. Well, I have a theory on that. I'm thinking we've been too model coddling. You know, we've uh, tried to protect our children from getting hurt. We don't want them to experience sadness. We don't want them to experience anything that might appear on the surface to be negative. And so we've done everything to protect them. And there's an upside to that, but there's also a big downside. We don't learn how to cope and deal. And one of my biggest techniques for coping and dealing is every day I ask myself the question, and whether this is in the area of health, finance, family relations, my spirituality, my business path, do I have, the question is, do I have everything I need just for today? So whether that's milk in the fridge, gas in the car, the lights are on, whatever that is, do I have everything I need just for today? I can't do anything about yesterday, it's over. And I have no idea what's on the horizon for tomorrow. Most people are living with one foot in the past, regretting, feeling sad, being remorseful, 
and one step in the future, always looking down the road, down the road, and they never really get to enjoy today, even in this moment of being on the air. This is the only thing I'm thinking about right now. I'm not thinking about anything else, just this. So learning to live in the moment, which is huge. It's very challenging because so many people want to create distractions and keep you running all over the place like a crazy person, like the old saying, a chicken with its head cut off. And so most of us are all over the place. And then when tragedy strikes or there's a death or we have a setback, we're rattled because we're not paying attention to the signs that were there to start with. So that's kind of the gist of our show today. And during the show, I'm going to share my own personal journey, like I said, before self-worth, during self-worth, and what's coming down the line. Does that mean I look for all the bad stuff to happen? Absolutely not. But I know when the bad stuff happens, I have the tools and the skills I need to make sure that that situation does not take me out or take me down or take me off my purpose. So question, how old were you when you had your first setback? Well, for me, a few things happened uh, by the time I was five or six, and I, I made a list of them, and I didn't realize that, wow, I had quite a few things going on when I was five and six. And the first thing would be my sister next to me was born when I was two and a half, and wow, I just lost my position in the family. I'm no longer an only child. So as we're having the children that for some children is, in fact, a setback. They lose their position in the family, either as the baby of the family or the oldest in the family. Then my sister next to me contracted, two and a half years later, she contracted polio. It was in the 50s. And just about six months before the Salk vaccine came on the market, there was a huge epidemic on the East Coast, and she became afflicted with that. Well, that changed everything in our family because all of a sudden she needed the support and I was shipped off to my grandma's where I stayed, I think it was about six weeks or so. I didn't know if the family was coming back to get me or not. And also at five, I had my tonsils out. They used to do that back then. They don't do that anymore. Why not? And then, you know, you're 30 and you've got a sore throat and you have to go have this surgery. Well, they took them out. Have I ever missed them? I don't think so. And then six months later, my appendix ruptured. Well, when your appendix rupture, you've got maybe an hour. And I remember the night that it happened and it was at my grandpa's house. And I remember there was a big staircase in the house and my dad was carrying me down the stairs and we were heading for the hospital. And So that was another experience all around the same time. It was very interesting. And I believe now part of that was that my sister who got sick was getting a lot of the attention. And so I believe that my body decided the only way I might get some attention is if I got sick. How crazy is that? But that's what happened. And then there was a big family move. We moved from the East Coast to uh, the middle of the country. Quebec, French, and we were living in a very northern community where the only place to go to school was a French Catholic convent, and we were English Protestants. So I was thrown into this huge cultural situation. I couldn't speak French, and I didn't, and I had never been a Catholic, and the only school was this convent. I believe it was probably a daytime residential school, if I really think about it. So here was this huge cultural shock. And while we were there, my mom gave birth to a baby girl who passed away two days later. So my first death experience. And when I think about it, wow, that all that happened around that that age group. And also thrown in there is 
starting school, right? Starting school. So how old were you when you had your first losses, setbacks, and tragedies? And I know that for me, I watched my parents guide themselves through the all of that sick children, loss of a child, a big move. There were lots of things going on. And they managed to float their way through that somehow. Today we're talking about bounce back ability. I'm Laurie Davis. You're listening to The Laurie Davis Show. And we'll be back right after these few messages. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 BC to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 BC. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Lori Davis. You're listening to The Lori Davis Show here on BBM Global Network, Tune In, and iHeartRadio. This morning, we're talking about bouncing back and knowing that no matter who we are, where we live, what our circumstances are. I heard the other day there are approximately now 9 billion people on the planet, at least 7.5 for sure. And I am here to tell you that not one person is going to escape some sort of setback, loss, disappointment. The key is learning how to respond to that. Most of us have spent our lives reacting to it all, which takes a lot of energy. And I just shared my early childhood experiences, like in a matter of two years, all the things that I endured, and I'm grateful now for that. Because it built my coping mechanisms. And one of the challenges we're facing today, and our children have lots more to deal with, lots and lots. But I learned early on also that it's not a popular thing to make a mistake. It's not popular. It's not okay. And when we make a mistake or we mess up, we become so self-critical that we could quit or give up or shut down. And children are learning that life's challenges are not a good thing. But in fact, they are a very good thing. That's why they're there. They're there to teach us so much more. So protecting our kids from making mistakes or being hurt or not allowing them the range of emotions experiencing the vast range of emotions that are available to us, we are actually dehabilitating their ability to cope and 
and um, as I said earlier, manage to get through life's challenges. And we must have those experiences, those vast range of emotions. When I ask people today, how are you? They have two words. I'm good or, well, I'm really bad or sad. There's no specific language to express our feelings because most of us had our feelings shut down early on. It's not okay to be angry. If we get too excited, we need to calm down. Everything is always being monitored and so controlled, I say, whether it's in the school environment or in the home environment. And when people start to cry, have you been in a room where somebody's had some bad news or they're feeling sad and they just need to cry? And in our culture, how uncomfortable we are with that, not even allowing people to feel their sadness. And this is all part of our coping mechanisms that have come with us. It's in us to be able to handle whatever life throws at us. We have everything we need inside to deal with it. But now to deal with something is to throw it out. So if my TV's not working, I'm just going to throw it out and buy a new one. If my washer breaks down, well, I'll just throw that out and get a new one. And if I don't like my partner anymore, I'll just throw them out too. And we actually have parents throwing their children out on the street because they have no coping skills. And where do the kids learn how to cope? Well, we learn from our parents. And I learned from my parents. My parents were married for 67 years. Was it perfect? No. Was it challenging? Yes. But somehow or another, they knew how to maneuver through those hard times. And I'm really feeling strongly that that is where I learned that situations and circumstances are temporary. They're not going to last forever. Now, the feelings that are attached to those situations, that's what lasts forever. So, for example, at age 12, when I was sexually assaulted by a family member, wow, that was my first secret, my first secret. And I buried that thing so deeply that it took 33 years for me to bounce back from that. 33 years before I actually shared it with my parents, with my friends, with anybody. And we cannot heal what we're not willing to acknowledge. So secrets are another way of saying that we definitely haven't bounced back. We have not recovered And most of us are just busy, you know, recovering from our childhood. I know I was for many, many years, till I was about 45. I was just busy recovering from my childhood. And it had its trauma and its tragedy, but I don't like comparing because other people, what they went through is equally as hurtful and damaging. Maybe not the same things, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So in a way, I was being groomed and trained to recognize the fact that my own self-worth had been totally damaged and destroyed on that day of the sexual assault. And because I didn't share it with anybody, how was I going to heal from that? Well, in fact, I never did until it came out and I started doing my own personal work. And then I realized on that day, I certainly wasn't the dysfunctional person. It was my attacker. That's who was dysfunctional. But little kids, and I've mentioned this before, we take everything on. So I'm sharing some of my own story today because each of the events in my life have prepared me to become stronger and stronger and stronger because that's the decision I made 
on many different occasions that I certainly wasn't going to allow someone else to have that kind of power over me where I would make poor choices like killing myself or going on antidepressants because I can't handle the anxiety or the depression or sign myself in to an institution or take drugs. Did I drink? Uh Uh-huh. I certainly did. And I never really touched alcohol till I was 34. And when we come back, I'll talk about why that started. And then get into the self-worth, the missing link, and the challenges there. But everything that happened to me up until then prepared me. And I didn't realize just how resilient we can be until certain things take place. I'm Laurie Davis. You're listening to The Laurie Davis Show here on iHeart, TuneIn, and BBM Global Network. And we'll be right back after these few messages. Essential Nutrients LLC is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the realization of your dreams by making them a reality based in quebec canada joanne is also a space coach using social media and skype to work with anyone anywhere around the world contact joanne charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca 819-360-3266 now is your time Hey, welcome back, everyone. I'm Laurie Davis. You're listening to The Laurie Davis Show here on BBM Global Network. Tune in and iHeartRadio. Uh, this is a call-in show, and we don't have any specific guests today, so we do have time to take some calls if you want to share a story of your own, a setback that you endured and that you were able to bounce back. We're talking about BBA, Bounce Back Ability. And is it five minutes, five years, or never Our number is 1-866-451-1451. That's 1-866-451-1451. And in preparation for talking about self-worth, the missing link, our claim to fame, that was always being developed. I haven't really noticed that until I prepared for the show today and I started thinking back. I had no intentions really of speaking about my childhood today, But when I realized I needed to, because that's where I learned how to cope and how to be strong. And right around the time of that incident with my family member, my dad had taken what we call a big setback. Right at the same time, he had lost his very, very good job. And in those days, in the 60s, there was no severance package And he took the golden handshake and we went from, some people go from rags to riches. Well, we sort of went from riches to rags for a while. And I know that he never really recovered from that. 
emotionally to start with. And eventually he did financially, but it took a long time. But I lived through that with him. And he showed me that you can always bounce back. And at 67, he had some pretty nasty surgery. He lost his voice box due to throat cancer and lived another 20-some years. Everyone that was in the hospital with him passed away, but not him. And so I had some very good role models for coping. Some of the things that I've done and that I do, so I'd like to inject a few tips in between the, the stories because my just for today, do I have everything I need for today, has been my strength builder. I also know that circumstances and situations are temporary. They're not going to last forever. It might be a week. It might be two weeks. I've hung on by my fingernails on more than one occasion. One thing I do know is my ability to never give up on myself or others, even though I've had the experience of people like rats jumping a burning ship, I'm still on the ship. I guess that means I'm the captain. (laughs) Practicing gratitude. I have more to work with today than I've ever had in my whole life. I'm extremely grateful for that. Forgiveness of those who have hurt us. We have to let it go. And I was my own worst critic. If I made a mistake, I beat myself up sometimes for weeks. I gave that up. We need to give that up. Let that go. Learning how to love myself even when it didn't look like I was a good person. But being able to love myself enough to rise above the circumstances. Looking for the best. Looking for the best in everything, every situation, every person I meet, even though they may not be demonstrating their best, I see the best. I had that experience this weekend at our lodge, Butterfly Lodge. We catered to a wedding. We do those kinds of things to help keep our doors open. And my staff at the lodge, we just rocked all weekend long. And we had guests in every room. And there were two or three people who thought they were going to control the whole situation. But I looked past that and realized I recognized it because that was me. So just looking for the best. And at the end, they were so grateful and appreciative and relaxed. Changing my language, huge for me, for coping. Instead of saying something like, I can't afford it. When I can afford it, totally different concept. Or... I can't get back to school, or I can't. Taking the word can't out of your vocabulary. Believing in myself. Trusting myself. This was huge. Trusting myself that I know what is best for me, what is best for my family, and what is best for my business. When we have no self-worth, what other people have to say becomes more important than what we have to say. So those are some tips that I use on a daily basis to cope and get past the setbacks. So in 1984, I arrived home from work one day and my husband was out mowing the lawn. And when I got over to him, he was crying and I looked at him and holy man, when he had put his head up, He had four rope burn marks on his neck where he had tried to take his own life that day. And then there was a subsequent attempt a week later. Not quite so pretty. And he went into a mental institution where he lived for two and a half years. 
And this is where the alcohol came into my life and where sleeping a lot came into my life because this was something I had no idea about. We had never had any of that kind of an experience in my family to date. And three months after that situation, we lost my niece, who was six at the time, and was killed in a school bus accident. This put our family in the throes of coping. So when we come back after a few messages, I'll talk a little more about that. And that really was the catalyst or the seed, if you will, to start my journey of self-worth the missing link. It actually started years before it manifested. I'm Lori Davis. You're listening to The Lori Davis Show. And we'll be back right after these few messages. Hello, I'm Steve Fagan. And I'm president and CEO of Fagan Associates. But I'm also a life coach. I'm here to help you reach your dreams, goals, and objectives. As a life coach, it's my job to be your support, to be your teammate, to help you understand what is your dream, what is your life passion, and then together we work as that team to help you reach your specific goals. Life is worth living the best you can be. Working with a life coach, you're fulfilling those dreams and goals is your passion, and it's your way of living. Let me help you do that today. Let me help you really reach the best that you can be as a person and live the life you should be living. I'm Steve Fagan. I'm a life coach, and I'm here for you. Contact Steve Fagan at FaganAndAssociatesInc.com or call 1-800-239-2701. And I'll be glad to help you move forward to live the life of success. Reach your dreams, your goals, your objectives. We can do it together. Welcome back. I'm Lori Davis, and you're listening to The Lori Davis Show here on BBM Global Network, TuneIn, and iHeartRadio. And uh, we have some time for call-ins today. If you're so inclined, our number is 1-866-451-1451. That's 1-866-451-1451. And today we're talking about, if you're just joining us, about our ability to bounce back and get back on track. So now here we are in the throes of losing two immediate members of our family at the same time. And how do we bounce back? Wow. Eventually, when my husband left the institution, he disappeared, and he's been on a missing persons list since 1986. That was the beginning of my self-worth journey right there. So I've actually been working on this project for 34 years. 34 years. And so in 1992, I was able to remarry, met my partner, Ron, and we started on that journey of putting it together. We were in business 10 years, and we were moving along quite nicely, but I'd had a couple of situations where I wrote some programs. I only had one program back in the day, and people actually came to my training and then stole the program and tried to make it their own. And this was after it was registered with the federal government and copyrighted. Who does that? I also at one time had moved a friend of mine into my apartment and when she left, she took everything with her. Have you ever had anybody steal stuff from you? That's pretty scary and a big form of betrayal for me. And so I got into a situation with some people that I really should not have trusted. Have you ever done that? Got yourself involved with people? But they loved everything about me and everything about what I had created. And they wanted to throw money into the project because we were moving and grooving and growing. And then I got involved in a very nasty court case. And... There was no crime that was ever committed here, but somebody was going to make sure that we did not proceed with our work. And from 1998 to 2002, we were in what I call a very dark time. We lost our home. We lost everything in it. We lost our retreat center. 
We lost our integrity, our credibility. We were in the throes of a $250,000 legal bill, traveling back and forth to court. And the charge was selling securities without a license. Well, what's that? That's a stock, a bond, a share. And what, in fact, we were doing, people were lending the company money. So someone made it their business to make sure that we were not going to proceed and try and shut us down. And interestingly enough, at that time, I was also working in the Aboriginal community. And I realized after I had my only day in the witness box that that's what it was really about. This was 20 years ago. Have I bounced back from that? No. I don't believe there's a week that goes by that somebody does not remind me of that situation. And we were found guilty. We were never arrested. The police were never involved. And we are about to open that up again because that needs to be put to rest. And a lot of people got hurt in that process. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the TV show 60 Days In. My next book is going to be called 60 Days In For Real. Because I was actually incarcerated for 60 days for a crime that never was committed. How does that happen? This is Canada. But it happened. And so we know, have we ever bounced back from that? In a way, yes. In a way, no. Because when that was done, we had three options. And when I say we, it's Ron and I. Number one, we had... Uh, created a lot of financial debt because we had borrowed this money from people and now had no way to pay it back to them. So we said, all right, what should we do? Should we kill ourselves? That was not even an option. Shall we go back to work and just get regular jobs? I was a teacher. He was an aircraft maintenance engineer. We could get our jobs. Or do we go back to work and build our business? And I might like to add and, and broadcast this, that we do not have a criminal record. There's nothing on the file. And nothing has ever been done about that. So here we are at the hands of people who promised to do certain things, ended up getting in a whole lot of trouble, and we were left holding the bag and lost everything. Wow. Wow. But knowing what I know, this is the inspirational side to our business. My self-worth was intact when that all happened. And I managed to get through that whole thing graciously, respectfully, and came out the other side, knowing that it didn't even have anything to do with me. It was about people being afraid of the power that people can get when they have their self-worth. So it's very difficult to be controlled and manipulated when you love yourself and you have your self-worth intact. And that's the reason I had to have that experience because I put myself through my own program and it kept me safe, it kept me alive, it kept me dreaming, It kept me hopeful, and I started this journey with two friends, two ladies, and I started this journey again in 2003 with two ladies, and for that I am truly grateful. We can overcome anything, because what is inside of us is far greater than any situation that's outside of us. And even though people judged that, judged me, and are still judging me, I have no concern with that whatsoever. Because what is that about? That's about them and their lack of self-worth, which is why the world needs what we have so very, very badly. And I also wrote a self-esteem program for Inmates, and I called it Papa. Prisoners are people also. And 
a lot of times are victims of a system that's not working very well. All right. If you're just joining us, we're talking about bouncing back. I bounce back every single day. I jump out of bed, put my two feet on the floor. And if you believe in the devil, the devil says, oh, my gosh, she's still alive. And that's been my claim to fame, being able to bounce back with graciousness, respectfulness, forgiveness, and love. We'll be right back after these few messages. I'm Laurie Davis. You're listening to The Laurie Davis Show. Abuse happens every moment of every day. According to national statistics in the United States, every two minutes, someone is sexually assaulted. And every 10 minutes, a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, no, there is hope. There is help. There is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing. And it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed. Hopeful. Happy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Laurie Davis. You're listening to The Laurie Davis Show. And today we're talking about bouncing back. You can do it. You've got this. Totally. And people want to constantly remind us of our flaws, our faults, our mistakes. I've done lots wrong. But man, I have done lots of things absolutely beautifully correct. Or we still wouldn't be here. We're still in business. We're still growing. We're expanding. We're on the front end of a massive expansion right now. So the next challenge, once we got out of there and got past the court case, and of course there was lots of media coverage, lots of publicity, but once we got past that and we went back to work, I'm back on track. I'm back on focus. And When you stay true to your purpose, you will always be blessed. So the first contract that I got was from the Department of Justice. How does that work? I I still have some furniture that I bought with the money. Because remember, we lost everything. We had to get rid of everything. We lost everything. And so I still have some of the furniture I bought out of that money just for uh, old time's sake. And so we started again. And how many times are you willing to get up after you fall? It's okay to fall down. And now when I fall down, I go, okay, must be, what's the gift in this? I'm able to look and find the gift before I get feeling badly about what's going on. I go, oh, I don't attract bad things. I attract lots of good things, actually. And so right around that same time, at the end of that whole deal, ordeal, wow, technology stepped in. Online technology, being able to talk, using the technology we're using right now to broadcast to millions of people. That was brand spanking new in 2002, and I had a male client who who called me up, and he said, Lori, there's this new technology. It's called Voice Over Internet Protocol, and it would be perfect for your programs. So I go, great. Okay. I embrace the technology. I spoke to my facilitators at the time and said, we need to upgrade our computers. We need to get computers, maybe even, some of us. And so three weeks after we were online, the whole thing crashed, fell apart like a $3 watch. The company that had started up went bankrupt in a very short period of time. Maybe it was three months in a very short period of time. And now we're without classrooms. But we need to understand that that was a stepping stone to the technology that we're enjoying right at this very moment. 
And we were smart enough to embrace that. And we've been broadcasting online since 2002. I didn't know what we were going to do. And at the time, I was servicing some blind clients because they loved the fact that they could go on and do the audio. And one of our colleagues said to me, I can take you to a guy that can build us a classroom. I said, okay. So we go to visit her buddy. He's a head of technology for CNIB, the Canadian National Institute for the Blind. His name was Jim. He was totally blind. And he built us a little classroom. He said, I could do that for you. I said, okay. And I paid him once a month to, it was very small. I could only put maybe 10 people in there. But that was okay because our groups are six plus a facilitator. And so that setback, we were not going to let that go, the fact that we could be international and reach international clients overnight. So all along, all the way through the last 26 years, there have been highs and there have been lows. And there has been financial struggle. There has been legal struggle, which I talked about. And then in 2008, this is six years after our case, we're grooving and moving again. And we get a phone call from our son-in-law that our daughter's very, very sick. And they live in the West and we live in the East. And so we decided we better go help out. There were two little grandchildren there. So I dropped everything, just brought my laptop, my cell phone, my point of sale, a bag of clothes, and came west. And survived on that for six months. We were here for six months before the family decision was made that we would move. So I was basically operating out of a suitcase, if you will. And this is after being in business. Now, it would have been 15 years. And it's just knowing that we have the ability to deal and cope if we don't give up on ourselves. And when one person does not do what they say, everyone is affected. And there have been lots of times I have not been able to do what I said I would do. Because that relies on other people and what they say. So again, your trust is constantly being challenged. And then, of course, in 2016... We experienced a recession where I'm living, and it was severe, and our business was definitely impacted by that. So I just want to personally thank all of my clients from Saskatchewan. If it had not been for you, we might not still be here. I'd still be here and doing what I do, but where we're headed and the capacity of the business. So life happens And bad things, I'm living proof that very bad things can happen to very good people. And we are not going to escape that. So the best thing for us to do is to prepare ourselves. So when the you-know-what hits the fan, we are immediately looking for the gift in that, looking for the lesson in that, and being okay with that. But our nature is to react and to be bitter and to be angry and to be upset. And oh, by the way, in 2009, after moving to the West, we had a summer property that was actually stolen, if you don't, if you can imagine, by our former lawyer who did not represent us very well in that court case. And he used the legal system to do it. So, bad things happen. My favorite word is next. Next, the next adventure, the next project, who's the next person I'm going to meet? Who's going to be my next superstar? Who's going to be the person that just takes this thing and takes it way further than I've ever been able to? I'm just so grateful and thankful that I've had 34 years Since 1984, I've had 34 years of independence and freedom. Does it come with a price? Absolutely. Is it worth it? 
Totally. Totally. So if you're just tuning in, I'm Laurie Davis, and today we're talking about bounce back ability. What's your ability to bounce back? Well, mine is, uh, I call it eternally, because I, it, it's not going to matter to me what people say or what people do to try to hurt me. It, it's irrelevant. It doesn't even, it's not even part of my equation anymore. Because if something is meant to be, it's up to me. If other people would love to help me, that's a bonus. I love myself. If other people love me, that's a bonus. I'm kind and good to myself. When other people are kind and good to me, that's a bonus. Because that's what I've learned and that's what I know as I'm sitting in my 70th year on the planet. And boy, does it take time to learn these lessons. So embrace the challenge, embrace the problem, embrace it. And is it sad when we lose a loved one? Absolutely, totally devastating. But let them let you know they were there for you and you actually have that influence that you can carry on, even if the person's body's not here, because we're all going to pass away. We know that. That's inevitable. I'm Laurie Davis, and you've been listening to The Laurie Davis Show here on BBM Global Network. Tune in and iHeartRadio, and we'll be back for our final segment right after these few messages. Abuse happens every moment of every day. According to national statistics in the United States, every two minutes, someone is sexually assaulted, and every 10 minutes, a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, know there is hope. There is help. There is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing, and it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed. Hopeful. Happy. Horses. Mystical. Present. Past. And future. All in one. Wild. Free. Domestic. And healing. For everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. Welcome back, everybody. This is the fastest hour of the week. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe how fast our time goes when we're together. I'm Lori Davis. You're listening to The Lori Davis Show here on BBM Global Network. And in closing, I would just like to say that even though I've had my struggles and the obstacles and the challenges, I also can say I have had a very privileged life so far. I know that because of the lifestyle I've enjoyed when I was younger. Well, not really. I guess my whole life I've traveled, but did most of my traveling in my early years and have been to far corners of the earth. I'm privileged in that I've had a family that cares about me. I'm privileged because of my education and the experiences I've had learning more becoming more credentialed, if you will. I've had a privileged life. And what we need to do in order to cope is know that we, it's important to embrace all of the small successes. 
because the small stuff eventually adds up to the big stuff. And every single person that's been here on my journey, as I said last week, whether they helped me, hindered me, or did both, were gifts. Every single bit of it. So the future of Self-Worth the Missing Link is bright and sunny. And now is the time. Success is about timing. And everything has a purpose. I don't know that I believe in everything happens for a reason. But I think everything that happens has a purpose. Has a definite purpose. For us to examine, reflect, um, line things up. Line things up. So... Thank you for listening, and thank you for being here. I've enjoyed so much doing our broadcasts and having our guests and talking with people on different things about anything and everything. And I look forward to seeing you next week, same time, same station. And next week, I would love to have a broadcast actually about the impact of suicide and sexual assault and how they're connected. I've just done some research and I'm quite excited about it because it op- opens up another another way to support people and to help heal people because when that happens, it absolutely trashes your self-worth. And so I look forward to having a, some people come on and talk with me next week. Have a great rest of the day and looking forward to spending more time with you. Bye for now. This has been the Lori Davis Show. Tune in each week as Lori will provide programs and services to support your personal or professional development in order to help you find your self-worth here on the Lori Davis Show. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.